Hi, Elise Dewsbury here, Artistic Director of New Musicals Inc. with another episode of my vlog series, How to Get No Feedback from Elise. Uh, I have been working on a uh, sort of a mini series of assignments, which are um, things that I'm asking you to go and look at in your own musical and actually take a look at them and, and, and uh, see if you can make some changes based on what I'm suggesting. The first one in the group was about character diction, making sure that by taking one pass through your script for each character to make sure that they each are speaking with their own particular unique uh, forms of expression and grammar and syntax and all of the above. And then the, la the more recent one was on character identification, making sure that, uh, that uh, each time you introduce a character that you know exactly when you want when or if you want your audience to know their name, their relationship to other characters, their occupation, things of that nature, and make sure that that's actually in the script and not just in the stage directions. And the one I'm going to talk about today is transitions. Um, this one, I, I might, if I had to say what I type most often in my notes when I'm reading um, a musical for feedback, the word transition comes up more often than I can say. The assignment that I would give you is to take open up your script for your new musical and look at the end of every scene and the beginning of the next scene and compare them. Who is in the scene? Who's the, who are the last people who are physically in the scene and, and speaking or, or able to be seen at the end of a scene? And where is the location and what is the time? And then take a look at the top of your next scene and see who speaks first, who is visually apparent first when, the scene, when that scene begins, and, um, and what is the time. And then step back and put on your hat as a producer or a director and think, is this transition between these two scenes going to be stageable? Is it logically possible in theater? Now, I will say that musical theater today is extremely cinematic. And there are many, 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 many things that you can do. There are um, sets that truck on and truck off and fly in and fly out. And there are all kinds of you know, amazing lights, lighting tricks that you can do to make it easier to flow smoothly from one scene to another. Um, so that we, we're not stuck with the way things used to be done in the old days where the lights would go down on a scene that would be dark for a moment or two. People would check their program, see what song is coming up next, cough a little, put in a new cough drop, and then the lights would come up and we'd move on. That is not done anymore. Don't do that. Don't expect that there will be time for that. So you have to assume that the change that's going to happen is going to be able to happen while the audience is watching it. The lights go, um, you know, the lights go uh, down on one scene and up on another on the other side of the, of the stage is one way to do it, a cross fade. Which means, think about it, that the actor who is at the end of this scene, uh, you know, in the bedroom, cannot be at the top of this scene at the office because this is what the lights just did. So that, that seems simplistic, but I guess the most important thing that I want to, to, uh, to impart is that although I do believe that, that uh, modern musicals are incredibly cinematic, there's one thing that a modern musical cannot do that a film can do. And, uh, and I, as far as I, and there might be other things, but the one that leaps to mind for me is that a, um, basically, and you know, call me if I'm wrong on this, but to my understanding as a director and a producer, a musical, a stage musical, cannot do a jump cut. They can do crossfades. Uh, they can do something that a, that a movie can't do, which I think is a lot of fun and many musicals do, which is that we can actually follow our character. The lights don't need to go out. Our character can walk out of a scene and the lights can stay on that character and we can be with them as they travel to the next moment, which could be could have a passage of time. They could even do a costume change as they're walking um, and, uh, and, and a new scene can, or they could stay put and the scene that they're in trucks out and a new scene trucks in around them and, and the stage transforms around them and we stay on them. It's amazing what a musical can do. The thing to bear in mind if you're doing that kind of a, what I would consider a fluid scene transition is that for my taste, that needs to be a conceptual decision for the entire piece. You can't just decide, well, in order to get from this scene to this scene, I guess it better do one of those flowy things. Um, I, I think a musical either does those kinds of transitions or it doesn't. I don't think you can just pick one transition to do that, to have the scene transform around something and have it only happen once. Uh, one of my 
biggest bugbears is consistency. I think you can do just about anything provided you're consistent. And to me, to have only one such transition in a, in a show is not consistent. It's not a concept. So, um, so what I would say is if that's the kind of thing you want to do, then you have to write your show with the idea in mind that we will always be on our character, which means the character always has to be speaking, singing, thinking, doing something as the scene transforms around them or as they travel to the next scene. So it has to be written right in. It has to be part of the concept of the show. But beyond that, a, a, a musical is not capable of doing a simple jump cut where the lights go down and it's, you know, as, as, your, as your character is, is uh, going to sleep in their bedroom and when the lights come up, they're fully dressed the next afternoon at the office. That cannot happen. You just have to accept that there's some magic that that the that the that stage can do but that's not one of them they it cannot accomplish a jump cut so take go through your own script and look and say do i have uh, my lead character mary you know saying good night the last line of this scene and she's you know in her pajamas and lying down in bed and then lights up on the next scene and mary is it's the next afternoon and mary is dressed and in her office at her typewriter that's not going to happen so what you These need to do came back from a search that's uh, my, my uh, Alexi is trying to help me out with this, but I think you can do this on your own without her. <laughs> um, so what you want to do is go through the, the read the end of each scene and the top of the next scene, and then imagine if you were the actor in that scene, where do you have to move to? What do you have to change into? Do you have to change your clothes? Do you have to get to a different part of the stage? Um, and and if that's not going to work, then you. Now I have an airplane going overhead. I am not going to restart this one, so you're going to wait through the airplane. What you have to do as a writer is think, okay, if I absolutely must have her at the end of this scene in her pajamas and at the top of the next scene, it's the next day in the office, how can I add what I would call a buffer? How can I put a buffer in one scene or the other? I mean, one thing to do, of course, would be to put a different scene in between uh, that cuts to a different set of characters. That's one of the simplest ways. But the other thing to do is to create a buffer. So when the lights come up on the office the next day, she's not there at her typewriter. Someone else is there doing something else. And a moment later, just a few moments later, it's people can move pretty quickly and they can have dressers changing them backstage but you need to give them a moment of time so you need to have a moment um, with your b-plot characters you know that are chatting at the desk and then she comes in she's just come back from her lunch break or whatever and she and the actress has had time literally to change out of her nightgown into her clothes and get to the other part of the stage that would be a buffer you could put the buffer at the end of the prior scene or you can put the buffer at the top of the next scene or you can add some kind of interstitial material or a scene in between. But you cannot do a jump cut. Um, or, or we can follow her, you know, as I say, but no jump cuts. So that's the assignment. Open up your script, look at the end of each scene, at the end of each scene and the beginning of the next. See who's in it, what time of day is it, and what is the location, and then what's happening in the next scene. And is it going to be physically, logistically possible for this transition to happen? And if not, figure out what you're going to need to do to fix that. Okay, so go do that and then meet me back here next month for a new assignment. Bye-bye.